Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome. So uh, this is what happens when USWDS meets single directory components. A new theme called the governor. So if you're here for maximizing Visual <laughs> Studio Code with DDEV, that's over into Hilton. Mike and I are uh, sending our people to the opposite place. So uh, that's the worst picture I could find of him. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, uh, Ivan, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Ivan Duarte. I uh, have been working with Drupal for more than 10 years, I think. And I try to contribute as much as I can. Uh, I'm a father of two kids, so I try to do my best. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. That's it for me. Uh, my name is Mike Herschel. I, uh, I'm a senior front-end dev at Agilina. I do a lot of core contribution. I work a lot with uh, single directory components, getting that into Drupal core. I've done a lot with the uh, Olivero theme, getting that into Drupal core, and miscellaneous other things. Uh, we both work for Agilina, which is one of the sponsors for Drupal Gov, Drupal GovCon. Agilina is a company that does a lot of large federal projects, including logos for these various organizations that you can see here. And you want to do the outline. Yeah, uh, those are the things that we are going to see today. In general, we are going to try to explain what is USWDS, what are uh, single directory components, and the issues that we face trying to integrate those things together, and how we solve those issues, and what we are planning for the future of this. So, yeah, that's the outline. So, who here, had, who here was a front end developer? Backend developer? Who here has used a US web design system? Who here has used single directory components? Who here is just hanging out? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you that would work. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do a quick overview of the US web design system for those who are not familiar with it. It's uh, basically a design system that's built and maintained by the federal government for use mostly by the federal government. It looks something like this, um, and uh, this is like one of the templates I just pulled off their web page earlier. has a lot of benefits, including cost effectiveness. It's, it's, it's already there, so you don't, have to do, you don't have to develop it. It has a big community. Uh, it scales fairly well. It has a very user-centric design. It's consistent across, you know, uh, different web pages, so like we want federal web pages to look like federal web pages so people know that they're on a federal web page. Uh, it's very accessible and it has great browser support and it's also mo uh, mobile friendly. But it's not all roses. Uh, there's some issues with it. It uh, has uh, limitations for customization, has this uh, legacy SAS based architecture that like dates from the Internet Explorer days. Uh, the, um, the assets it generates excuse me, are monolithic, you know, they're, they're very large CSS files and JavaScript files, has kind of a rigid navigation system, you know, like uh, the navigation has three different variants of navigation system, but you can only do certain things with them, at least out of the box. And depending on your implementation, that might be a pain in the butt to update. This is uh, one of the issues that I'm going to talk about, and this is just a big screenshot of just like their, their big uh, compiled CSS file. It's about a half a megabyte, and I just wanted to kind of highlight that because that's one of the issues that we strive to fix within single directory components. So Yvonne's going to explain what those are to us. Okay, so in general, single directory components, as its name says, is just, um, it is a new module in Drupal 10 that is an experimental module. Uh, the intention of this is that you can create components that all the files and all the information that you need, all the assets and all the things that you need for that component to work are stored in just a single directory. It's easier to maintain, it's easier to copy and paste and do all this kind of stuff. So yeah, those are the single directory components, so it's really nice that we have this in the core now so we can start playing with it. Um, yeah, we can go next to the next one. Top button. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in general, this is like a single directory component looks like. And so you will see they used to have like a component YAML file, and we have like, like a schema or a definition of the component. This is just for, for that purpose. And then we have a, a tweak, a template, as we usually do with other Drupal templates. 
And we can also add, as, as we said before, the CSS, the JavaScript, images, and other things related to that component inside the single directory. And this is how it will look once you have it in your, maybe in your theme or in your module, because they can be added in any of those. So as you can see here, we have this, um, this my button component. So I will try to use this fancy thing from my <laughs> so, <laughs> Okay, so as you can see here in my button component, it, as you can see, all the files for this component to work are there. So we have the images, we have the component, jungle files, CSS, JavaScript, the histories, if we want to use the storybook. For this, the tweak template, we can add a readme file for the people to, under to understand how to use your component and how to embed your component. We can generate a thumbnail. This thumbnail will be used for other modules that are complementary of the, of the single directory components. And that's it, in general, that's the intention. For, that's the reason why it is called single directory components. So, let's go to the next. And as you could see, this is like an example of how uh, you can embed or use a single directory component in your existing tweak template. Suppose that you need to, you want to replace your node teaser or something like that, and use a single directory component, maybe a card or ELWDS card or something like that. So this is the way you you can use that. So you can, as you could see, you you can use this embed. Uh, strategy to, to use the component and then you can send some arguments, variables uh, to the component and then the component will do the rest. We'll take the, 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 as you can see in this example, we are not attaching libraries, we are not doing those things here because all the things that we need to do is just to embed the component, send the right information and then Drupal will be able to get the right libraries and load those things for you. So this is a really nice thing to do because you don't need to take care about those other things. And why, <laughs> why we decide to create another USWDS theme? Right now, if you go to Drupal.org and you try to search USWDS, you will find that there are other USWDS-based themes out there. But we found these limitations. In general, they are not supporting single directory components because this is pretty new. And also, when we try to use one of the existing ones and trying to convert them to use single directory components, we found that the way that they were structured, it was really difficult to customize. You need to go to multiple places trying to change a background, a primary color or something like that. So at the end we said, ah, we need to start from scratch and try to do the things to, to work in that way. So those are our reasons to, to create another team. And which benefits we find in this integration. In general, we are following theme best practices using single directory components. As you know, we are using still uh, tweak templates and all this stuff that you know from Drupal. Uh, we are using well-known components because as you know, WDS is taking care of accessibility and other things that we need to, to do, in, especially in, in federal projects. We can, using single directory components, it can allow us to do a progressive migration of our existing theme because clearly we need to install a, a theme. Some, sometimes you just need to replace it's one of the other. But with this strategy, you can maybe just take our theme and just copy and paste the components that you want to use and start doing a progressive migration. So maybe you, you say, I want just the accordion. I want just to use the card component. Maybe you can steal that component from our thing, and that will be it. It is easier for you to, to migrate for, to US WDS in that way. And also the performance, as I told you before, um, in this case, when, when you are not using single directory components, in, and if you want to divide or split your CSS or JavaScript libraries, you need to do it manually. You need to manually start attaching this library here, this library in this tweak template, this library here. But using single directory components, this, the, the module is taking care of that. You don't need to do this process of attach, 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 attach. And in this case, you just put the right files in the right place, and Drupal will do the rest. So it will be loading only the CSS and JavaScript libraries that it needs to render that component. So it is, it is a better performance in this case. And also, using that uh, approach, uh, you can 
it's easier for you to create your custom components in your in your theme. So we are doing that. For example, working on these on um, some of the of the projects, we found that USWDS doesn't have a tabs component. For example, we wanted to replace their default Drupal tabs for edit nodes and things like that. So we found they have not something something like that. So we can just add our own component to to do something like that. So this is another advantage that we have. We can extend the USWDS library and we can create new components that it, it is easier for us to integrate. So, yeah. So what was our vision? Well, our initial vision was we wanted to do a base theme, right? And the, the reason we wanted to do a base theme is to keep our, like all the USWDS stuff kind of combined into what, like, encapsulated into one thing, and then that could easily be updated, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we couldn't really get to that point, but I'm going to show you, like, how we kind of mitigated this and how we worked around it. So uh, here are some of the dragons that we ran into. That's a cool picture. And I, I, I liked it so much I continued with the parchment. So... <laughs> Uh, the, the, the main issues that we ran into are, uh, like, USWDS has these SAS-based design tokens, which are really useful. Like, the way that it works is you update one single value in a, in a SAS settings file, and then when you compile that SAS into CSS, it updates it everywhere, you know? So if you change, like, your, your base primary light color, it just updates it everywhere. You change your, you know, your, your uh, unit of... of uh, you, you know, your length uh, measurement or something like that, it'll update it everywhere. And that's useful, but at the same time, for our particular uh, use case, we couldn't, we couldn't do that because if, if we were to uh, import settings from a child theme, a sub theme, you would not know the path of that sub theme, and, if you, and, you, and it kind of defeats the purpose to update those settings within a base theme. Um, Another issue coming from the USWDS is it's just, in general, it's pretty monolithic by, by default. You know, it just gives you one big old sat, uh, CSS file and JS file, and we can talk about how we work around that. So this is how we're fixing these. So the first thing I want to talk about is just kind of uh, splitting up the, uh, the main CSS file into multiple CSS files. And we only want to load those CSS files when the components are being loaded, because we want it to be quick. So. It took us a little bit to get into this. We dived into the USWDS source code, and this is just like, I think, the breadcrumb component right here. And you can see it's loading a number of dependencies up there. We, we don't want to load these dependencies within every thing, single component, because then you'll have like multiple copies of you know, fonts, multiple copies of you know, your icons, and stuff like that. So it's easy enough to do that. We, like you can see on the uh, second line up here that we're bringing in the, uh, uh, only the styles. And uh, in, in order to do that, we have to load the settings file first. That settings file is where we're putting in all those custom tokens. And then at the end of that, you can see we have an override file. That override file is specific for each component for when you do want to do overrides, you know, which is pretty common, at least in our experience. So in order to make this happen, we have this big old gulp file. It's actually not too big. It's like 70 odd lines right here. And uh, I, I worked on this thing for like two days and completely failed. And then Yvonne worked on it for like two hours and got it working. So he's a wizard. <laughs> so um, I like those graphics. Uh, so, uh, but uh, I have a link to this at the bottom because there's a lot of the magic is, is in there. This is up on Drupal.org, so you can, well, you can just navigate to it like normal. But the... Uh, all of the work that kind of splits off everything and puts the CSS in the right place is within that cold file. Um, so another uh, thing, as, as I explained earlier, we have these SAS-based design tokens that work really well, except when they kind of don't work quite as well as you want. And um, this is kind of what they look like right here. If you work with USWDS, you've kind of probably done this before. Where you, create a number of different variables, or, or you use a bunch of different variables, you override those. Um, so instead of a uh, base name, we're using a starter kit. And if you're not familiar with starter kit, it's actually included in Drupal core, and it's like the new way to generate a theme. So their Drupal core actually ships with a starter kit theme, which is extremely, extremely bare bones. And um, so we make use of that. You can run this command right here, 
this like Drupal generate theme, and you specify you know your name of the theme. You specify the uh, thank you. I like how it does that too. Uh, and and then you specify the uh, the starter kit right there, governor, and it just creates a brand new theme. And what that does is it, it just does like this very complicated copy rename. You know, so everywhere where you know the word governor was used within the configuration within the uh, within pre-process with any anywhere like that it'll just rename that and make sure it works and plop it in there and this works pretty well so now instead of having a base theme uh, sub theme system you have this one theme that you can then update your SAS your SAS settings in right here so we have this whole idea this is not implemented yet we have this whole idea of like integrating in CSS variables and and this is Basically, we just need to find time, which means it'll probably be a while. <laughs> so, so uh, but, but this is kind of like the stuff we're kind of experimenting with, you know, like right here, where like in, 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 a, in a perfect world, we'd have like this cool, you know, uh, mapping. So, you, so, so you, we would define our CSS variables at the top and map those maybe to the defined SAS variables. And then within each component, we could, um, we could override the, 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 Various properties with uh, with the SAS variable, which could then be overridden. And then right now, you can see in that right there, I have like the fallback value uh, pointing to SAS, and then you could just easily override it. And that would work in our use case. And our per our particular use case that we're that we're working on really hard right now is we we're actually doing a uh, a multi site for for the U.S. federal court system, and so we're going to have one theme, but the U.S. court system wants to custom like each. Each like little site might want to customize a color, and that's not really easy to do with SAS, if at all. But with CSS variables, it's pretty trivial. So, if we can get this work in and get it to where we like it, it's probably going to make its way back into Governor. Okay, um, just switching a bit the, the topics, and in, in this process of working with single directory components, at least for my side, because I was pretty new to single directory components when I started working with Mike. So we found some other modules that can help with this integration right now. So if you are planning to start using single directory components or to govern or theme or something like that, um, the first module that I recommend you to start taking a look is the SDC display because it allows, it allows you to use or to render your entities as components using the admin UI, the manage display tab in, in, in the entities. And for me, that's really great as, 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 as a developer because you may think, why not just to replace the trick template and send the variables? Because by doing that, you cannot use formatters and those other things from Drupal that are, that are really cool. You, you can, for, from my side, that's really great. I can still use the formatters, but I can still use the single directory components and I have a nice looking admin UI to do all this process. So this is a really cool module to do that. And the other one is called CL Blog, but I think there should be a new version because I don't, um, maybe you don't know, but single directory components are coming from a module uh, created from Matteo, I think, yeah. from Matteo that was called Components Library or something like that. So he started with uh, a lot of complementary modules of, of that. But yeah, in general, what this module is doing, it is automatically generating block types based on your components. And that's really great as well because it is able to like to understand the schema of the component and translate the, that schema into Drupal fields and automatically you will have an, a, 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 a block type available to you. So if I create, for example, a card component, a USWDS card component, and then I enable the module, I enable the component to be available in the block display section, then you can go to your home page and I want to add a new card. And the system will be able to detect that in this place you want to add a title, in this place you want to add an icon or something like that, and you just need to start using the, the, the admin UI to do that. So that's really great because you don't need to replicate the same work multiple times, you just create the component, one time and the system will be able to recognize that structure and to translate this into Drupal fields and things like that. So I think this, those are really good models to, to start with, uh, with single directory components as well. And what's the future of this? 
Uh, from our side, those are our ideas of the future. We want to add more components. Uh, so far, we just add maybe 10, the more <laughs> common components, but we want to add more components. We want to experiment with the CSS variables, as Mike, Mike just said before. We want to add storybook integration uh, to be able to have like a component library. Maybe all, some of you already know this tool, but you have like a nice looking component library where, where you can uh, interact with your existing components and see how they behave. And we have the logo, but yesterday we generated our first version of the logo, so we can check that. <laughs> so yeah, here is the, the project page in Drupal, and this is the, the first version of the logo. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. You want to say I like that logo. It looks like a mean Uncle Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I actually think that's like pretty badass. Um, yeah. So uh, as you can see right here, like we have our first alpha release up on uh, project like Drupal.org's Project Governor, and so you can download it and critique our code. Our document we wrote documentation. Believe it or not, holy cow! Uh, it might not be perfect. It, actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's far from perfect, but like you all can like start uh, creating issues and finding stuff. There's going to be some stuff in there, but uh, yeah. So uh, here are some resources for all this type of stuff right here, and uh, if you're going to take a picture, this is a good one. Um, so like the first two links right there are just, you know, uh, links to USWDS and talking about the governor. Uh, if you're new to single directory components, though, uh, which y'all should like really, really learn it. Uh, there's some excellent documentation that I've worked a lot on on that third bullet point. And uh, I have a session that I did at uh, DrupalCon Pittsburgh, and that's that YouTube link at the bottom right there. And that's uh, the creator of the um, of single directory components, Mateo, and I did that together, and we explain it, and we go through the process of migrating a component from like the traditional Drupal style to using single directory components. So yeah. Um, Oh yeah, one more thing. I am an organizer of Florida Drupal Camp, so I have to like plug it right here. So I don't know if you know this, but in February in Washington, D.C., it's not that nice. <laughs> but in Orlando, it's pretty nice. So you can come down, learn about Drupal, do a little contribution maybe, hang out, see, hang out with some alligators, and it's, it, it's honestly like the best Drupal Camp in my humble opinion. So yeah. Um, so that's it. We like intentionally left a good amount of time for questions, so I hope you have some. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so any questions? Uh, first in the back in the gray shirt. Do you have a roadmap for what you're planning on doing with this theme in the future? So the question is, uh, do we have a roadmap? We don't have like a, a roadmap with a date, but like like we do, we are gonna we are actively working on this, right? So like. The first thing is adding more components and experimenting with CSS variables. We have an active project right now that we're going to be experimenting with CSS variables to see how well that works. Um, and at that point, kind of do storybook. And if you have any type of uh, any type of feature request or anything like that, create an issue or just you know if you're in Drupal Slack, just ping us. Anything to add? No, I think that. If or when. The USWS yes updates or changes. Yeah. Is there? A, are you expecting to have a plan to like update an existing theme, or once you've created it, you're for it? Yeah, that's a good question. So the so, so so the question is, when uh, USWS is updated, um, how are we handling that? And the uh, answer is, if it's a minor update, uh, you should just be able to, you know, d do the process, the update process through NPM. NPM yeah. And we can, uh, you know, we'll also create a new version of the theme that will have that included by default. That being said, when USWDS is, has a major version change, and my understanding is that they're experimenting with like, kind of dramatically changing the architecture to to include web components. Assuming that changes. It's going to be a major version change for the governor in order to to, to to implement that. Can I follow up? Yeah. How does this relate to web components? It does. So the question is, how does it relate to web components? And it really doesn't. We don't make use of web components here. Like, and and there's like a lot of confusion when I talk to people about like single directory components and web components. And the reason is totally because web components are the most horribly named 
uh, technology ever. Like everything on everything on a web is kind of a component, and so when they call something web components, it's like really confusing. And for those of you uh, who who are maybe not like front end developers and not in the know, the term web components is like a collection of terms for like things like shadow DOMs, custom elements, and stuff like that that can be created with JavaScript and encapsulate everything. But this does not use that. Good. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to say regarding the, the, the updates, as you said before, in general, because we are using a, a starter kit, basically you get a copy of the, of the theme. So in that copy, you have the, the package JSON file and things like that. So you can just run the npm commands and you will be able to pull the latest version of ESWS. Could you make, I'm sorry to make questions, could you make your theme a parent theme if the CSS variables was fully integrated with working. Is that the only thing keeping it? Yeah, I think that's I, the I, biggest I thing. So. Yeah, I think that's the, the major issue. Uh, repeat us. the question. Uh, the, yeah, the uh, yeah. yeah he, he was asking if the only limitation to provide this as a base thing is the CSS, are the CSS variables. And from our side, it is, yeah. We basically have that vision at the beginning, but we couldn't make it work because it was not possible to to inherit SAS variables or something like that. So yeah, that's the main issue for us. Is the theme name a reference to The Walking Dead? Is the theme name a reference to The Walking Dead? I've only watched like two episodes of The Walking Dead. So I'm going to say yeah. Watch it first. Uh, then no. <laughs> uh, in front. Uh, just wondering if you have any thoughts or recommendations on writing tests with single directory components, uh, unit yeah. tests, or visual regression tests? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the question is, any thoughts or recommendations on writing tests with visual regret or any visual regression tests with single directory components or anything like that? We don't have any tests built into the theme yet. Okay. We should probably do that. Yeah, we should we probably should. put. Okay, let's let's edit this slide right here. Write down tests. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> We definitely want to stabilize this and make sure make sure it works properly. Um, in general, as far as testing single directory components, uh, there's an SDC examples module. I think that has tests in there. And in general, like in the Drupal core work I do, it's uh, I we use a lot of Nightwatch, which is like Cypress, but not Cypress. But like I mean, you can test it. Uh, in the back. Talk through kind of the challenges you had when facing trying to break down those JavaScript files into their own components. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, and this is a really good question, talk about breaking down the JavaScript files into its own components. The answer of that, and you're going to be really happy, is that we didn't. Um, <laughs> like the, uh, the the JavaScript file was not too bad. It's like 100 kilobytes or something like that. And um, if like we probably could have done something with Webpack or yeah. something to do that, but like for those of you who have not used it, Webpack is notoriously complicated. That wasn't a path that we wanted to go down and support. And uh, the hundred kilobytes of JavaScript in a world where like many web pages have like three megabytes of JavaScript didn't seem to seem to us yeah. as like a huge issue. You know, it, it, if if we could find a uh, a, a way to do that that's maintainable and like easy. I'm I'm totally for that because less JavaScript the better as far as I'm concerned. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, green shirt or yeah, right there. yeah. Um, can you or would you want to use live import live include libraries on a component by component basis? Yeah. So the answer is or so the question is can you or would you want to uh, import libraries on a uh, on a component by component basis? So, uh, Drupal yeah, yeah, Drupal libraries. So, so, so single directory components gives you that option, right? So, like, when you're defining your uh, component.yaml file within single directory components, by default, if it sees a uh, you know um, card.css or card.js, it will use those. But you can override that, right? So, like, there's a library overrides key that you can do in there, and you can specify I want to load all these all these CSS files. All these JavaScript files, and then, and that's also where you add dependencies because you frequently have like a dependency on like maybe like Drupal once or jQuery or something like that. Thanks. Uh, Black shirt. So uh, you mentioned that the components have their own JS and CSS, which is only attached to the page if the component is used on the page. 
So how does it work with JS and CSS aggregation? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, the question is, uh, so how does how do single directory components work, work with CSS aggregation? And the answer is it 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 it, it bundles it all together. It, it kind of bundles it. We have there's a there's an open issue in the Drupal core queue where um, the CSS like we're talking about loading order like the CSS gets loaded a little bit earlier than in my opinion it should and so I'm kind of working with uh, Mateo who's the uh, main developer of SDC to do that to kind of make the CSS load a little bit later um, but that being said like it aggregates fine it um, it it, ju it just works like behind the scenes it actually creates its own temporary library and then loads that. So it creates multiple aggregated CSS versions for different pages? Well that's how Drupal works in general, you know, so like if 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 like you have different uh, different libraries loaded on different pages, it will give you different bundles per page. Yeah. And it, it just it just like hooks into that. Go ahead. We have a few of I guess the entities. I'm sorry, did I steal again? I'm sorry. You did. <laughs> I'm sorry. I so many. What if you have a view of, that uh, displays as entities and it's like uh, you can filter or whatever, so you're basically pulling in potentially new entities yeah. that have the required right. component that the first page that loads doesn't? That's a good question. So, like, will, will like, uh, uh, assuming that a new component gets ajaxed in, will single directory components work with that? My answer is it should, and if it doesn't, it's a core bug, but I haven't actually tested that yet. I, I yeah. uh, regarding that, I test single directory components with lazy builders okay. in Drupal, and it works. Okay. I don't know how, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. So this is actually a real question. Um, since uh, the components can be coming from a base theme, a sub theme, potentially modules also, is yeah. there now a naming convention for core and contrib for like the naming of the CSS portion of it? So like obviously uh, USWDS has USA dash whatever for its components, but like is Olivero going like Olivero dash nav, and uh, then like a model also have to follow that sort of naming convention? No. No, uh, uh, we don't have like any particular naming conventions as far as the CSS. Uh, we, we do have naming conventions for um, uh, CSS variables that are attached to the root element. Um, but that being said, like nothing within like Olivero or single directory components or anything like that. Uh, it, like as far as like your question was that like single directory components can't come from a module, a base theme, or the active theme. But the way that single directory components do overrides is you have to fork the entire single directory component and put that into your active theme. Um, and that's intentional so it doesn't get too complicated. So you should not have any type of naming collisions. But that being said, if you're using like a common name like container or something and you're using multiple different uh, CSS libraries, you could run into that. But that's, that's kind of your own fault. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, we recommend this this feature for production sites, or because we can see that there are a lot of challenges to face on. So yeah. So the question is, do we recommend this on production sites? So. Uh, keep in mind that single directory components is currently experimental in Drupal core right now It's like an, a module that you enable, but yeah, it's going to be part of just like the Drupal core render system So you don't have to enable that um, We're using it on production sites um, This in my opinion is production worthy. Uh, I'm happy with it. It's it's not perfect but like all it does is it just spits CSS JavaScript and markup out, out onto the page yeah, because we are using single directory components, as I explained before, you can just use the parts that you need from it, so that's it, it's, it's, you can use what you need of everything. Yep. Okay. Uh, I have a quick question, so I am currently using the components module. I'm not, like, I have a, like, a bastardized version of like, what single directory, and I'm really excited about switching over to STC. I am not using USWDS. <coughs> Uh, but my question is more, what, do you know what could happen to the component module? Do you think it might be deprecated in favor of STC in the near future? I don't know if you've heard anything. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah, the question was what will happen with the components components module, this is the name. Yeah. There is an existing module that allows you to organize your tweak templates in your theme in a similar way that com single directory components are, are doing. So if we know the future of that module, it may be if the core is going to include the single directory components, maybe that would be the end of the components module. So, in my opinion, I don't know. I, I don't know what would happen, but and in my case, I would say maybe it will. Maybe it would be the end of that. No, no. I wouldn't think so, though. Like the components module just basically allows you to define your own Twig namespaces, you know, which could be useful outside of uh, single directory components. You know, or maybe for whatever reason you don't want to use single directory components, which you know, yeah. it lo yeah, like it so. I would be very surprised. Like the maintainer of that is John Alvin Wilkins. He's usually on top of keeping everything updated, and he's active and stuff like that. So I would be very surprised, but obviously we can't give you a definitive answer. Go ahead. Uh, for an existing project that wants to move to this, let's say, you know, working on getting get into D10, um, and they're using USWS and let's just say like a very fun implementation of it using Pattern Lab and yeah. all that stuff. What is your recommendation of transitioning to this? Because I heard you say like you can use parts, yeah. you can, like I'm just curious if you, if you have experience doing that and what's your recommendation as, you know, as devs to, is it just like tear it out and start from the beginning or can you do piece by piece? I'm just, I'm just curious like how, how do you think that I have thoughts, and I, you probably do too. So the question is, is I guess there's an existing build that's using a very interesting quote, uh, uh, like probably hacked together a version of Pattern Lab or something, and uh, you know, with their own components. So I would, like number one, for maintainability, I would recommend to move to something like this, because Pattern Lab, at least the PHP version of Pattern Lab, has been on support for a long time. And then there's the Node version, which is really wonky and uses Twig.js. Um, like, so single directory components can integrate in with Storybook, which is a more modern, well-supported uh, component library, like, I guess, viewer or something like that. And um, it works pretty well. Uh, as far as migrating, it's probably going to be a pain in the butt. But like that being said, like I'm sure you can do it like on a case by case basis, you okay. know. And do you have thoughts yeah. on this? Yeah, I, I would say that would be the best approach in that in that case. Maybe just instead of just using the the theme as it is right now, maybe just pull the theme and start taking the parts that you need and replacing progressively. And maybe someday you will say, ah, I'm almost ready to do the full migration. But I think that that's the better way, that component by component. Thank you. Okay. Speaking as a Drupal.org contributor, where do you need help with this right now? It's a good question. So uh, the question is, where do we need help on this? And, and so as far as the governor is concerned, we need people just to kind of use it. Uh, find holes in documentation. Find find stuff that they want to use. Uh, there are one or there are several components that we haven't yeah. built yet. So uh, I don't, we don't have a list of those. We should probably create issues or something like that. Um, stuff like that would help out a lot. Um, if you have any thoughts or anything, like we're kind of all open. We're, we're, we're our ears are open for that type of stuff. Um, anything? Is that no, good? I think that's okay. cool. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Anything else? All right, one more question. Steve? Thinking from like a, a headless point of view, is it at all feasible that single directory components could generate a web component? So you're talking about from a headless point of view, with uh, could single directory components generate a web component? So there's two questions in there. Like, I, I guess the first question is single directory components and a headless environment. I would say, like, that's not really, new. like single directory components are more integrated into the Drupal rendering system. So if you're doing headless and you're just passing off JSON or GraphQL or something like that, you're not gonna use single directory components because you're gonna use the component libraries with React or whatever type of you know, front end that you're using. Uh, the other question was uh, using single directory components with web components. And the, the answer is yes, you could totally do that. So you could, like single directory, all single directory components does is it bundles markup, it bundles uh, JavaScript and CSS 
all together, you know, and it, it, I guess it defines schema and stuff. So you could totally like have the JavaScript for a web component in there, you know, your your custom markup with your custom element and stuff in your in your uh, in the Twig file, and it it would work it would work just fine. Yeah, I think so. Yep. All right. Anything else? Thank you.